think, uh, first of all, I should close my eyes and um, uh, I would talk um, three times and that I talk now about is a science and we need it. And <laughs> after that, probably, I can start to uh, try to connect the previous uh, sessions and the rest of the day um, because we have great um, images and we have excellent formula and now we should try to connect these knowledges uh, for the clinical implications but unfortunately we know now that all is relatively and this is our topic the z scores uh, the z scores and the indices and how we can use it therefore i invite you for the next uh, couple of minutes to talk about this uh, scores and um, indices and i would say that the first indice that we well know is probably the cardiothoracic ratio it was published 1919 and this is the old picture of the x-ray but if i would ask who of these two patients have any kind of hyperplasia i have i have no answer probably we should uh, look inside of the patients and also in this case i don't know is it the hyperplasia of the left ventricle or is it the hyperplasia of the right ventricle i know the answer because i know these patients this is the Epstein anomaly with palmar atresia, and this is palmar atresia without uh, ventricular septal uh, def defect. But how we can decide, probably we need any measurements. And we can try to produce these measurements. This is our instrument, and we can look and measure. But um, only with the eye, uh, it is uh, probably not possible. Therefore, we need any indices, and this is the Z-score, but before we speak about the Z-score, I should say that the world allometry has been used since 1936 and was published by Huxley to describe the relationship between change in the shape and overall size. That score is defined in the, uh, in the deviation, the observed measurements, the expected measurements divided um, through the standard deviation and how we can use it now. We can try. First of all, these are the well-known um, uh, Gauss distribution with 50% uh, in the middle, with no standard deviation, and with our Z-score of zero. And we know that normal values are in between plus one and minus one, or probably plus two and minus two, but we are looking for the extreme, very small or very large. And the Anthony Hopkins asked us, do you know how to use this thing? We hope we know it, but we should uh, take a look. There are very many different methods and different scores for assessment of the ventricular volume, mass, diameter, function, and so on. The fetal, the postnatal, the 2D strain, NGO, MRI, and I think if we wait a little, then we will also get the Z scores for 4D MRI, but how we can use it to answer our questions, I don't know at the moment. If you're looking into the fetal measurements, we have pretty well distributions of a right ventricular diameter. The confidence interval is small, and this is a huge amount of the patients, about 3,000. But if we can, uh, as we speak about the predictors of the right ventricular underdevelopment, the amount of the patients reduced immediately from 3,000 3, to 30 patients, and the answer is we cannot predict, we shall measure it all, and after that we will see. And the sensitivity and specificity of the measurements with 85% is probably good enough to say it's not a bad, we can measure it once more after the birth of the child. But it is not enough to say this is a definitely decision for us. And these are the measurements, this is a table from this publication, the measurements that we can find after the birth are the postnatal measurements, and these three uh, publications, there we can find any uh, data in regard to the right ventricle. And this is a well-known Detroit score, uh, about one, uh, 800 patients, and we have also the Z scores for the left and uh, right pulmonary arteries is in between uh, minus one and plus one, the normal values, and also for the tricuspid valve. And I would say, if you know this website, we just can open it, put our data into this online calculator, and we have our uh, measurements. Uh, on this step, we can say thank you for your attention. Uh, but we have a little bit, a couple of minutes more, and we can try if it's really so. 
this is a comparison between the North America and South America measurements for the right ventricular uh, diameter. And if we put our point on the 50%, it is the Z score uh, zero. And the same um, body surface area, unfortunately, we have two centimeters of the right ventricular diameter or 17 millimeters. It is not so much uh, for the all day, but probably this is much enough to make a false decision. And if we try to precise our data and if we go to the other methods, uh, this position where we can see the complete right ventricle and the echocardiography, the 3D echocardiography, um, uh, 2D strain or MRI, then the amount of the um, patients reduced from 3, 1, 2,000 to 50 or 30 patients. Therefore, our Z scores have a value that we probably cannot use. What is with our topic? The pulmonary treasure with VSD. The hole is inside, but the problem is outside, I would say. And this is a publication from 1964, from the 11th circulation, and it is 64 patients, and we can recognize this is all, uh, also such a kind of the Z score that the tricuspid valve is in N. It is in between, it is normal, but the pulmonary valve is A minus, it is extremely small. Probably we should go through this door, and after that, is all is good. We know that is not the case, and we, now, we, we need other indices, and uh, it is not bad to think once more about Nakata index, because it was introduced not for the Fontan population, it is only 15 patients in this publication, but mostly for the tetralogy of Fallow and Palmer Atresia. These are 17, 17 in this publication, and the recommendation were the, the pulmonary treasure, a stale operation, should not be performed primary if the pulmonary index is lower than one, uh, 200, because all patients with pulmonary artery index of uh, 200 died after their stale operations primary. It is very hard work. The pathology uh, uh, can be corrected primarily if the pulmonary artery index is more than 100. The other method that we probably can add to our measurements is uh, such, a, such a called pulmonary segmental artery ratio. It is, I think it's interesting because we should not forget the development of the lung and the lung segments. There are about 20 in the healthy individuals and the authors measured all this pulmonary branch together. There are 15 in these patients, divided it through 20 and get the index of 0.75 and it was pretty correlated with pulmonary artery index. Probably we should not make a stop on the central pulmonary arteries, but go further for the decision in regard to the pulmonary arteria artery with VSD. And this is the algorithm, how we can um, try to treat the patients. This is from the papers from New Zealand. And I think we should perform five times heart catheterization and two operations, and then the pulmonary artery will grow. Uh, I think we can make more. We can make 10 characterization or five operations to get this result. But the um, authors recommend uh, that the complete repair can be performed if the Nakata index is more than 150. Let us try to take a look for our patients. I summarized the four of them. And surprisingly, it was this development of the pulmonary artery. They really grow. We started with three, six, seven uh, months with the perforation of the pulmonary valve, and if we continue the measurements, the points are the heart catheterization, then we have increase of the pulmonary artery value, and the first operation was done with the age of 18 to 24 months. Uh, therefore, two years without surgery, open surgery, and after that, and uh, we have uh, valveless conduit or pulmonary valve replacement. And in this one patients, we have really five catheterizations and two operations. Let's take a look for these patients if this model is working. And uh, it is really so. We have the pulmonary artery in the first one angiogram, then it's open, then it's stented, and then it's pretty well developed pulmonary arteries. And 10 years later, we can think about the practically normal pulmonary arteries and about the further life for these patients because if they measure it, we do not, inter our point of interest is not the vessels but the patient and his quality of life. And I would say 
in this one patient, this is this uh, young girl. Uh, according to the new scoring system, it was 6.0 uh, if you know for figure skating, and it's now uh, till 10. I would say the score is 10, it's amazing for the pulmonary atresia with VSD. But what is with the pulmonary atresia without VSD? It is no hole, but the problem is inside of the heart. It is very small uh, tricuspid valve, you can see uh, on this uh, echo sample, and this very small tricuspid valve, it is um, butterfly, it's really small right ventricle. Uh, is it, can it really grow uh, after our therapy? And what can we do for this and how we can measure it? And to answer this question, we summarized all papers that we can find for palmar treasure without VSD and put it, uh, these are these, um, uh, in black biventricular repair, one and a half, or univentricular repair, 17, uh, 17 uh, publications. And we look for the Z-score of tricuspid valve, and I was extremely surprised because the blue points is the total cohort mean for tricuspid valve Z-score, and as you see, the complete correction by ventricular can be performed with Z-score of minus four, or minus three, one and a half with a Z-score of minus nine, and there's a mean and deviation such as is given in these publications. And it's unbelievable that it's really possible. Therefore, I would say from this uh, uh, summarized data, we cannot give uh, no really predictors for treatment because the distributions of the data is extremely. The tripartite, bipartite, and unipartite uh, about 25% of tripartite. Probably this is a reason that we still have about a uh, third uh, part of the whole total population with biventricular repair, but there are no uh, direct um, uh, correlation in the papers uh, about uh, which we can decide. And this is a prediction if you look of the each papers. I summarize it, you do not try to, to, to read the text, but for mortality, Tricuspid valve set score from minus, low is minus five is a risk for factor for overall mortality or no statistical significant differences between the diameter and survival. Or for example, biventricular repair. The Z score should be more than minus two and a half or more than minus three or more than minus four or more than minus six. And this is also possible. Is it really possible? I don't know. And for the right ventricular uh, dependent coronary circulation, they mean that lower than minus three or minus two and a half, it is a prediction for the small right ventricle with coronary dependent circulation. If we try to summarize this on the other way, then we can say that the good ventricle is uh, such one uh, that has three party, uh, party and that, that score is lower than minus two and a half and uh, severely diminutive right ventricle, that score is less than minus five and Unipartite. But only the initial measurements of the Z score, it, uh, mean neonatal measurements of the Z score, can be used as prediction, not the development of the scores, but the initial measurements uh, can be used as predictor for the further um, uh, therapy. And these are our data that I summarized from the last two years. These are nine patients with different uh, methods. Uh, or perforation or surgical and different outcome, biventricular one and a half on univentricular, and the measurements are performed using two different scores, Detroit score and the Wessex score. And in the first line, for example, you have the Detroit score of minus two and a half, and the Wessex score is minus seven. And this is possible for biventricular repair. The same differences we have, of course, uh, uh, on the end of the, this uh, short follow-up. And uh, I would say, if uh, we say that we measured it, the surgeon should say, do it again, it's perfect, but do it again. <laughs> uh, nevertheless, if we have three partite ventricle, we can open it uh, despite of at minus, minus two or minus six, and two years later, we have pretty well uh, developed right ventricle, and that score that shown us that the tricuspid valve can grow together with the right ventricle. It is from mi minus two to minus one, and from seven to minus three. But it is extremely important also for the long-term follow-up, because this publication with 
450 neonates and 100 of them can be enrolled in this study said that the oxygen consumption correlate very good with the initial tricuspid valve Z score and the patients who have low tricuspid valve Z score at the beginning should not probably get the biventricular correction because their oxygen consumption capacity was lower in compare with, bi with univentricular or one and a half. You can see minus four, minus three, the biventricular, the dotted line is lower than the one and a half at univentricular. And it is a cost for the late deficit. Therefore, we measure valves and vessels, but we should think about the ventricles. In conclusion, the use of that score represents a helpful way of presenting patient-specific information, but users need to know how such scores are calculated in their limitation. The Z scores remain an imperfect approximation. The mean and standard deviation at each body size point are only an estimation and may vary widely between investigators. Thank you for your attention.